Hey everyone, it's Josh Andrew here. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Conversations with Josh Andrew. We're all about leadership, having meaningful conversations, and getting just a little bit better every day. If you've enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share this podcast. Your support helps us reach more people and continue bringing your great content. Thanks for listening. Let's keep the conversation going. Let's get into this week's episode. Well, hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Conversations. I'm really excited to jump into this week's topic. Before I do, just want to thank each and every single one of you for being a listener, being a participator in conversations. And really, I I designed this podcast in about 2017, 2018, and it came to life in about 2020. Jokingly enough, in the craziness of life in 2020, we all had a lot of stuff going on, but more lines just wanted to create space to have conversations with leaders, with people who I agree with, people I disagree with, and everything in between. I just believe that conversations is the road to health. Conversations is the road to healing and friendships and community and making a difference together. So if anything you get out of this podcast, I hope that you can understand that you can have conversations with people you disagree with. You can have conversations and learn from so many, so many people. And today, I'm really going to jump into this concept of busyness, and we've done episodes on on effectiveness and systems and really offering solutions, and today very much so will be the exact same thing. I just want to jump into the five reasons why leaders are too busy. I believe busyness is not a badge, it's a warning sign. You as a leader, it is a warning sign to me as a co-leader, as a leader, as a pastor, it is a warning sign when I hear somebody say, oh, I'm just busy. Got got a lot, a lot of stuff going on. I'm just busy. Busyness to me is a warning sign that they are being ineffective. They are not being the leader that God has designed them to be. So more, more or less, I have five reasons why potentially you are being too busy. I mean, again, if you are too busy, I'm telling you, you're not being effective. You are not balancing life as you should. And again, you've heard this a tons of times, but most of the time, life is not about balance. It's about rhythm and understanding the rhythms and the way God has designed you to be is actually a huge reason, again, why you are not being as effective as you can. Maybe you're burnt out, maybe you're tired, or maybe you're just, you're a go-getter and you're a person who loves to have stuff on your calendar at all times. I want to show you a couple of reasons, again, potentially why you're too busy. And just a caveat or warning here might be a little direct only because I love each and every one of you and I believe in each and every one of you and we should be effective and we should live balanced lives. Our lives are not designed to be busy. Busyness, again, is not a badge of success. It is a warning sign to me. So again, number one, poor leadership. You're not delegating. So we're jumping in, coming in hot, but poor leadership. So you're not delegating. You're doing too much because you refuse to delegate. It's not about being capable. It's about letting others lead too. Your job as a leader is to build leaders. When you are building leaders, and that is your only responsibility, being able to know what to delegate and what to empower people in, which you can use those two words hand in hand here, delegate and empower, not dump, by the way. We're not going to dump on people But here are four thoughts around poor leadership and not delegating. Don't just delegate the good stuff or the bad stuff. Share the tough tasks too. And vice versa, don't just just delegate the bad stuff. Share the good stuff. And it all comes back to this concept of energy management. What, What is somebody that is designed differently than me? What are they really great at and what fills their cup? And understanding that that might actually deplete me what someone is wired to do. Maybe they're administrative. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're more creative and they're more thinking about bigger solutions or just practical things that are on your calendar or they're not on your calendar. Again, it all goes back to not just delegating the bad stuff. I don't know why as leaders we think it's fun to just delegate the bad stuff when we go, ah, man, I I don't want to do this, so I'm going to let somebody else do this. And again, there are times in my leadership journey and yours that you are going to have to do stuff that you don't want to do. That's the point. That is That is what builds character. Very much so, though, what builds character in other people that you're building is for them to be able to do something that might not necessarily be the greatest, most granular, cool thing, but it is something that we have to do. So again, you're too busy because you're not delegating. 
Don't dump, by the way, responsibilities without support. Equip and guide. I never said dump. This is a clear example of dumping. We are three to four months out of Christmas Eve services in church. Dumping to me would be two weeks before I give no vision, no context, no budget, no framework and say, hey, we're behind. We need to do this. Can you get this done by tomorrow? That's dumping. What that's going to do is it's going to attach so many negative emotions or thoughts towards you as a leader, and it's not going to be as successful or fruitful as you would imagine. Don't dump. Dumping looks like you throwing something on somebody that potentially they were never designed to carry and you didn't do it effectively. What I want to do is I want to empower and delegate. So I'm not going to give you the whole pie right off the bat. I'm going to give you a slice at a time. And throughout time, what's going to end up happening is I have a 45 plate behind behind me on each side. After a while of doing squats with that, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to grow strength. And that's going to not just feel as heavy as it could have been from the start. The problem is when you add three 45s on each side and tell somebody to squat who hasn't squatted before, no way there are they going to be able to squat that unless they're very obviously innately strong. That's few and far between. That's just like you and your delegation and your leadership. When you add too much weight on somebody's back, what you're doing is you're crumbling them. And very much so, that's probably why you're not able to keep great leaders around is because you burn them out. Or it's probably why you haven't been able to build other effective and great leaders is because you dump, you don't delegate. And again, don't rob people from growing through problems. Let them learn through challenges. What ends up happening is you go, you take the first step, you delegate, but then you hover over their shoulder and solve all the problems in the midst of it. When I delegate something to somebody, I'm delegating from start to finish, which because again, I'm not dumping on them. I'm giving them as much context, as much vision, and much handles in the midst of that, I've already prepared their character to know when my leader delegates something to me, he doesn't want, he's not going to hover over me. He's going to give me vision. He's going to give me coaching in the midst of it and coach results. But don't rob people from allowing them to go through the tension of leadership. A lot of times what we do is, again, we just delegate it because we think that's the right thing to do, but then we hover over them. We have meetings about it, and it's just like all the time rather than entrusting them with it and then coaching results. Last thought here about poor leadership because you're not delegating is holding on to everything creates a bottleneck. You can't scale without trust. I'm going to say that last sentence before because it actually is relevant to churches, to businesses, to anything you're trying to do. You can't scale without trust. Mutual trust, by the way. When anytime you use any of those words, trust, honor, respect, love, those are mutual. One way is not trust. If I trust you and you don't trust me, that's not trust. There, there's, a, there's a trust gap there that we need to bring a bridge to. So again, you can't scale without trust. You want to scale. You want your organization to grow. You want your business to grow. You want your sales team to grow. You want your welcome team to grow. There needs to be mutual trust, and trust happens over time. And again, if you want to be taken seriously as a leader, be consistent. The best thing you can do is just be consistent. Almost to so much consistent so that your team anticipates you doing something. You should be predictable. An unpredictable leader potentially is not a leader. So again, number one reason why you are too busy is you are not delegating. So again, you're doing too much because you refuse to delegate. It's not about being capable. It's letting others lead too. Don't rob them from the blessing of leadership. Number two, self-importance. Everything does not revolve around you. You think you're the only one who can get things done right. The truth is you're making everything about you and it's slowing everybody down. For some reason, there are leaders who think that the world revolves around them. And they think the organization revolves around them. That is not an organization. That's a kingdom. And we only have one kingdom and we only have one king. You are not a king in a castle. You are like all of us else and we're trying to do something together. So I have a question for you listening to this podcast or watching this on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, by the way. If you were gone for two months, would you be missed or would there be a collective sigh of relief? If you're thinking about your team... And you're going, if I'm gone for two months, one, would this organization be alive? If it is, that means you're doing a great job. If the organization is not alive, 
what tells me is there is too high of a of a self importance that you have that that the decision making the the organizational freedom for people to lead is actually too too close to self importance because again it does not revolve around you I, I can't even stand that when we have meetings that revolve around one person man we need to engage the people who are supposed to be in the meetings and the people who are not supposed to be in the meetings let's not waste their time. So again, you think you're the only one who can get things done right. I've heard this a thousand times. Well, it would just be faster if I do it. So I'm just going to do it. Okay. Our goal is not faster. Our goal is effective and scale. So maybe potentially, yeah, it's going to take a little bit longer to teach them how to do something. Or maybe it's going to take a little bit more of your sanity to know that the excellence might go down 2%. You got to be okay with that because there's a long-term return on your investment with pouring into people and making sure they feel important and valued in your organization. So again, you're gone for two months. Are you going to be missed or are they going to go, thank gosh, my leader's gone. Now I can actually do what I've been trying to do. A lot of times they're coming to you with solutions they're coming to you with ideas and you think if it's not from me, I don't want it. That's a real problem. That is a real insecure person, by the way. Care more about the person than the task. Develop people, not projects. There are projects. There are things that we need to do. Absolutely. And people are our priority. The person that is in your team, the person that you hired, the person you onboarded to your church team, they're more important than the projects at hand. Because again, they, there is actual long-term investment on that person. That person potentially equals up to 20 projects, 50 projects, 50 different leaders underneath them that you're robbing because again, you're making it about you. You are not the king. You are not in at your own castle. There can only be one king and one castle, and that is Jesus. That is not you. So again, if you think you, are, you feel too busy, it potentially is because you're making everything revolve around you. You need to be the hero. The need to be the hero limits others. Give up the spotlight so others can shine. I'm going to say that again. The need to be the hero limits others. Give up the spotlight so others can shine. If you always are the hero in all of your meetings, if you're always the decision maker, if you're always the person that is the final person, I'm telling you, you're robbing people of them being able to shine, flourish, and be who God has designed them to be. So again, let's not be the hero. You don't need to be the hero every single day. You know who the best, best people are? Are the people who don't need to be seen they can just serve without being seen. They don't need the spotlight. And again, the person who preaches and does all the teaching or leads all the staff meetings, they potentially still are the hero. And again, we're all here. I understand that. But what I'm saying is if we make our lives about other people and we try to our best anyways to make the, the organization, your church, to not revolve around you. And again, there's vision cannot be delegated. Culture cannot be delegated. I understand that. You are the vision. You are the, you are the culture. But the reality is, is we can make sure we can set boundaries so that all of those decisions that need to be made, all the, all the things that we need to actually implement, not ideation, but execution, we can execute on. You don't need to be a part of that. You need to be a part of coaching the results and looking at the fruit and being able to speak to that. So again, the numbers, number two, the number two reason why you are too busy is you are making the organization revolve around you. Number three, low intentionality, no systems. So you're running around because you have no systems in place. Your lack of planning is costing you time and energy every single day. I'm so surprised at high capacity leaders, most effective leaders, all, I'm telling you, have a calendar and it is so detail oriented. They put on when they're waking up, when they're reading emails, when they're driving, when they're at the gym, when they're eating, when they're having one-on-ones, when they're having a date night, when they're, everything is on their calendar. If you don't have a detailed calendar that tells me you are going into your day, going into your week by default, you're just hoping things are going to get done. You're hoping, and this is not a personality type, by the way. I never said an Enneagram number, Myers-Briggs. I, that has nothing to do with being an intentional person. You are busy, not effective because you don't have systems. Systems are, by the way, daily activities that drive results. Without them, you just feel like you're always playing catch up. 
you're always trying to get ahead and you never feel like you are, it's because you don't have systems in place. And again, systems deliver results. Systems deliver the mission. So if it's not delivering results and it's not delivering the mission, that potentially is a roadblock. It's a stumbling block, not a tool. And again, I want to use the tools. I don't want the tools to use me. When I'm married to a tool or married to a method, what's going to be happening is it's going to turn almost into a religion. I don't want that. I want a system to deliver the mission. I'm not married to systems. Implement tools. Again, here's a couple of recommendations. A scheduling app, a project management app, and a communication app. If you can have those three in your team, I promise you, it's instantly going to go to a next level. You want to have a scheduling app. You want people to have meetings with you. Great. Use Calendly or use whatever to make sure people know this is when he's available. A project management app. You need to have tasks. There are things that need to be done. And for you to have a high, medium, low risk of not understanding this is super important. This is kind of important. This is not as important, but we still need to do it. You know, do that. And then communication app. Don't use text messages and emails. It is 2024. You, we got to stop with this siloed communication. Siloed communication hinders so much of your culture. You don't even realize it. Having team Slack messages or Involve or WhatsApp or I don't, it doesn't matter what tool. There are tools that I prioritize 100% and they're always in the show notes because I, I just believe in them. But all I have to say, just find tools and use the tools. They're only as useful as you actually using them. So again, low intentionality, you don't have systems. Some of your staff does don't have schedules and you don't either. There's a lack of structure which breeds chaos. A lack of structure breeds chaos, okay? Some of your staff, you have people that you are paying $90,000 a year and they don't have a schedule. They don't have a time that they're supposed to show up to work or when they can leave. And again, I'm all for margin. I'm all for having remote jobs and doing things that, again, we don't need to be married to an office. We don't have to have crazy office hours. All that stuff is, again, that almost turns into legalism. What I'm saying is just have a rhythm, have a schedule bare bones. And your staff, by the way, should know what you're doing. In my opinion, anyways, if I'm a staff member and I just can never get a hold of my boss, I can never understand what he's doing, there tends to be just a gap of connection and a gap of buy-in. Potentially, people are not bought into you because they don't know what you're doing and they don't see any results on the other side of it. If there's constant results and constant fruit, I'm good. But if there's no results and no fruit, by default, our brains always go, what are they doing? What are they doing in their free? What are they doing in our work week? I'm, I'm working hard and I'm trying my best and they're not. That usually breeds a lot of tension in your organization. So again, have a schedule and a lack of structure breeds chaos. So proactive planning saves reaction scrambling. Invest time in building systems right now. Don't do it next year. Don't do it in the next season of church. Proactive planning saves reactive scrambling. So for us, every single week, we have a 30-minute touch point where we're going to go through all of our major events and get updates. So right now, it is September 12th. We are already planning the end of Christmas. And again, we started, we planted five weeks ago as a church. So a lot of times what you're going to have is a very reactive culture because you're just trying to stumble your way through stuff and it just happens we are trying our best to be ahead two to three months at a healthy pace so that we can still on-ramp team members. We can still bring people in to make sure that they are good to go and in the midst of it, still get ourselves ahead so that we understand margin is where the best ideas come from. Margin comes from the greatest innovations in our world, comes through people having margin in their life to think and to catch up. So, Number three, low intentionality. Number four, avoiding the real issues. You're numbing the pain. You're busy because you're avoiding tough conversations and decisions. Stop filling your calendar to dodge the real work that needs to be done. A lot of times, to be honest, as men, we fill our calendars because we don't like ourselves. We don't, we don't want to sit with ourselves. We don't want to sit with our families. We're doing this because, again, we're replacing something. It's often said that wives replace their husbands with their kids. Husbands replace their wives with their jobs because we don't want to be at home. We would rather be at our workplace or our church because 
your wife is honest with you, your kids are honest with you, you're you being by yourself, you have to be honest with yourself. So when you're the man, when the organization revolves around you, you feel good about yourself. You you feel like you're making a difference. You feel everyone can't challenge you because they know that's my boss. That's not healthy. That is actually numbing the real pain points in your life. There's a real insecurity there. There's a real real trauma, real problems there. And to not make it so big, there maybe you're lacking confrontation or maybe you're just in decision fatigue and you're tired of making decisions. You're just overwhelmed. You're you're doing too much and you're just you're just doing things to just keep going and you think that's what's actually going to help you because when you stop, what's going to end up happening is all your thoughts, all of that weight that you've been carrying is going to catch up to you. So we fill our calendars because we don't want to be alone with our thoughts or face our own shortcomings. There are people who shouldn't be in leadership, but you're just too afraid of confrontation to address it. So again, potentially, you're filling your calendar because you don't want to be alone with your own thoughts or face your own shortcomings or your own insecurities. But very much so, there are people who should not be in leadership, but you're just too afraid of confrontation. So again, you're just filling up your calendar so you can't get that coffee or you can't have that one-on-one or you can't have that, that conversation that needs to be had because you're just going, I know it's coming, but I just don't want to do it. That's tough. Confrontation has an expiration. It's 24 hours or that person is not going to be bought into you and they're not going to trust you because most of the time people are okay with confrontation. If you're the leader, they want to grow. They want to get better. But again, 24 hours rule or they're not going to take you serious. Big decisions are easier when you learn how to trust your team to make routine decisions, by the way. So again, you, you're avoiding the big decisions because you think, oh, I just we don't have the budget for it. I don't know how to tell our team. If you've built up a layer of trust in your team to know, and you all are our decision makers at the end of the day. And again, there are big things that potentially you just need to be the final decision maker on. I 100% get behind that. But again, if you just have those routine decisions, those daily decisions that you know the organization needs to make, and if you can delegate those and focus your time and energy on the bigger ones, it'll be better for everybody. Last thought on avoiding the real issues. Your busyness is a mask for the discomfort you're avoiding. Your busyness is a mask. That's that's the mask of life. That's, to be honest, most of the time when you shake somebody saying, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm just busy. That's a mask of something truly is going on in their life. Something's going on in their soul, their mental health potentially. And it, we got to face it. You got to face it. You got to face the busyness. You got to face just... Again, I'm not saying full schedule is different than a busy schedule. Busyness is zero parameters, zero even understanding of what you're doing every day. You get done with your day and you don't even know what you did. That's a sign you're just being busy. Busy work is not effective work. So don't mask it. Stop Stop hiding behind the mask of your job or your busyness or your full schedule. We got to make sure the people that matter most to us get our best version of ourselves very much so, we need to not numb pain. Numbing pain regardless. A lot of, there's a lot of different stimulants that people default to when they're trying to numb themselves. One of the most primary ones I'm seeing anyways in church is serving. Is just doing a lot for God, but not being with God. There are a lot of people in church, a lot of pastors that I even talk to, they're doing a lot of things that they believe is for God, but they're not doing it with God. God, God is, by the way, you can't outrun God. That's, that's almost ridiculous to even have that concept to think. I'm going to trick him. I'm going to get the new strategy. It's like, no, nowhere in the New Testament, by the way, did Jesus run. And he was in ministry for three years on earth. And 2,000 years later, the church that is built on him is still thriving. So that tells me walking with my disciples, the people that I'm leading, and walking with God is but way better than running without God and running without a actual effective leaders. So again, don't mask the pain. Find somebody to talk to. Slow down. The last thought here around busyness, you're just following a bad example. It's time to find a new model. You're busy because you're copying bad habits from other leaders or other pastors in your life. Just because they were overwhelmed doesn't mean you have to be. Break the cycle and set a new standard. I don't care if you're 16 and the only, the only model you've seen is your dad. Start a new model. Be, be the model because you've seen the outcome of your dad being too busy. 
He's not home. When he's home, he's not thinking about you. He's not thinking about your family. We don't want that. We want to be the people who are present, who don't feel anxious, can just be where we are, be where our feet are at. Your pastor was burnt out, and now you're mirroring the same patterns. Don't perpetuate unhealthy norms. They're doing too much. They're taking every single coffee. They're texting people at 11 p.m. They have no boundaries. And you and for us, we go, I want to be like him when I grow up. I want to be the, the leader he is. But take chew the meat and spit out the bones. There are things potentially that he, the patterns that you're seeing that you don't necessarily agree with. That's okay. You don't have to be a copycat version of them. Because again, you can see the unhealthy patterns. You can see them not being physically healthy because they don't take their health seriously. They don't go to the gym. They take every single lunch conversation meeting and dinner conversation meeting, and they're not home with their family. They don't have a date night with their spouse. And you're going, man, I I guess because they're there, they have this level of influence. That's what I got to do to get to that level of influence. I'm telling you, that's not the way of God. He's got a one-of-one plan for you then I promise you, if you trust the way of Jesus and you trust the rhythms of Jesus, potentially there will be more fruit attached to it than you could have ever imagined. So these are a couple, by the way, phrases that people use as very, very poor excuses. For excuses for poor boundaries is the grind. Um, we got to work hard. We got to have even like work-life balance. I think potentially that that is again there there is no such thing as work life balance there's no such thing as balance in general you try to balance let's just say hypothetically here you have four kids you have two side businesses you have a spouse you have a family you have a church you're serving in church the the fact is you're not going to be able to balance all of that you just need to have priorities and be unapologetic about your priorities So your number one priority is you and God. Your number two priority is you and your wife. Okay, now show me your calendar and show me those priorities. Because what's on your calendar is your priorities. So again, you show me your calendar, I'll show you what you truly value. Align your time with your priorities, not someone else's burnout model. You got a lot of burnout models. I'm burnt out, pastor. I'm tired, pastor. I'm burnt out. You're not burnt out because you serve in a church two hours a week. You're not burnt out of your marriage because you have a two-hour date night. You're burnt out because your values are not aligned with your time. Your time always points to me, oh, this is what you value. You value sleep more than health, which is fine. Let's just be honest about our values. You value football over your family. That's okay for what you're being, at least we're being honest. That's what I'm trying to say. If you're just, if you could just be honest about the, the bare bones truth of it. And again, it goes like a funny example is the, the, the church hallway. Hey, let's get coffee sometime. We're never going to get coffee. I'm telling you that that concept, I, you won't catch me saying that. The only time I'm going to do that is I'm going to pull out my calendar and we're going to put it on the calendar right there. Hey, pastor, we should get dinner sometime. Yeah, when? Let's do it. I'm down. Let's do it. And again, you show me your calendar, I will show you what you truly value. Last thought around following bad examples. You got to re- redefine success, not based on someone else's pace, not on, on somebody else's fruit or the, the outcomes that are on their life. You need to define success for yourself. What is success to you? I would submit to you a couple things. Success is obedience. So being obedient to God and what his word says should be success. Outcomes are not success. Outcomes are up to God and outcomes are up to you and me doing our daily active systems and activities that will push us towards whatever we believe God has called us to do. And success is obviously making sure the people that you love the most, I guess you say that you love the most because potentially you love your job more than your spouse. That's a whole nother conversation. But for me, I know I'm a successful man of God when my, my relationship with God is thriving, I feel the Holy Spirit speaking to me. There's a, there's a vibrancy there. I'm not familiar with the Holy Spirit. I'm not familiar with church, for sure. But very much so, if my wife is secure, if my wife is thriving, if she's loving her job, if she's loving serving in church, if she, if she feels loved by me, that is success to me. Success is going, I'm going to spend the, the best energy I have 
And again, we all work. We have full-time jobs. I understand that. It's not about, it's getting, it's not about the quantity of time. It's the quality of time and quality of energy I'm putting towards the thing I vowed. So again, these are just five reasons why I'm submitting to you. You're too busy. I'm going to say them again, and then we're going to jump into the next week's episode. But number one, poor leadership. You're not delegating. You're doing too much because you refuse to delegate. It's not about being capable. It's about letting others lead too. Number two, self-importance. Everything does not revolve around you. You think you're the only one who can do things right. The truth is you're making everything about you and it's slowing everybody down. Number three, low intentionality. You don't have systems. You're running around because you have no systems in place. Your lack of planning is costing you time and energy. Number four, you're avoiding the real issues. You're numbing pain. It's time to deal with the real root problems there. You're busy because you're avoiding tough conversations and decisions. Stop filling your calendar to dodge the real work that needs to be done inside yourself. Number five, you're following bad examples. It's time to find a new model. You're busy because you're copying bad habits from other leaders. Just because they were overwhelmed doesn't mean you have to be. Break the cycle and set the new standard. Align your time with your priorities, not someone else's burnout model. I promise you, one out of those five challenged you. And I believe, again, if you apply this, the, the concept here is, yes, listen and have a conversation. The best part, though, is in the execution. The best leaders I know can listen to something, take it, receive it, and execute it. I love each and every one of you so much. I value you. I appreciate you listening to this week's episode of Conversations. We will see you next week.